see from that number. Uh, thank you, Governor Herbert. Thank you, Mrs. Herbert, as well, for being here tonight. Thank you, our other guests. We have uh, Commissioner Petroff and Commissioner Milburn from the County Commission and our City Council members and others. Uh, we appreciate all of you being here tonight for your support. It's wonderful to be in this beautiful facility. Um, it's exciting to be here, and it's exciting to celebrate the birth of our country. On July 2nd of 1776, the Continental Congress voted in favor of Virginia Delegate Richard Henry Lee's resolution for independence. On that day, John Adams wrote to his wife Abigail that July 2nd will be celebrated by succeeding generations as the Great Anniversary Festival, and that the celebration should include pomp and parade, games, sports, guns, bells, bonfires, and illuminations from one end of this continent to the other. Now, for those who question why we held the parade yesterday, I think John Adams is a pretty good authority <laughs> on the date that the celebration should start. <laughs> uh, we had our July 4th parade yesterday, July 2nd, but uh, John Adams said that's the day we should celebrate. On uh, July 4th, 1776, the Congress formally adopted the Declaration of Independence. Though the vote for actual independence took place on July 2nd, from then on, the 4th became the day that was celebrated as the birth of American independence. Now, the past few days, we in Centerville have been celebrating and following John Adams' call for celebration, and what a wonderful celebration it's been. Uh, parades, concerts, family events, fireworks, and more thousands have joined with us to commemorate the great anniversary festival, as John Adams called it. And on behalf of the entire community, I want to thank uh, John Grant, Nancy Grant and our celebration, our celebration chairs and our committee of volunteers for putting on these wonderful events. Thanks to our city staff and anyone, everyone who's contributed so generously of their time and talents to do that. Let's give them a big round of applause. The main author of the Declaration of Independence, Thomas Jefferson, eloquently describes self-evident truths, that all men are created equal, that they're endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. As our founding fathers so plainly understood, these rights come to humanity as entitlements from a divine creator. Those unalienable rights are protected by the rule of law later enumerated in our Constitution. It's my firm belief that our Founding Fathers were guided by our Creator to embody those rights in a divinely inspired Constitution. Our government's role under the Constitution is to allow individuals to thrive by providing them the safety and freedom to pursue their own happiness. Sometimes that basic concept seems lost today. President Reagan, Ronald Reagan once said, freedom prospers when religion is vibrant and the rule of law under God is acknowledged. But freedom's not free. Abraham Lincoln said about freedom, freedom is not the right to do what we want, but what we ought. Let us have faith that, that right makes might, and in that faith let us to the end dare to do our duty as we understand it. Now we have a community of individuals who dare to do their duty. We're particularly proud of those in our community who have stepped up to the defense of our freedoms by serving in the armed forces. What I'd like to do tonight, I'd like to recognize um, all of the veterans and active duty servicemen and women with us this evening and their family members. Could you please stand up? I know we have several. We appreciate you, we honor you, we respect you. I wish I had time this evening to introduce you to all the heroes from our community to hear their stories of sacrifice and honor. In our parade yesterday, we had several hometown heroes who just recently returned from serving overseas in Iraq or Afghanistan. 
Um, I, I know some of you are here tonight, and I hope you just stood up. Specialist C. Ryan Rainier served in Afghanistan as a medic and recently returned. Specialist Josh Mist Mitchell served in Special Forces in Iraq and returned in April. Specialist Alan Cook, Army National Guard 19th Special Forces, returned to us in April. Specialist Matt McPhee, Army National Guard 141st Military Intelligence, returned from deployment in June. Uh, Specialist David Edmonds, Army National Guard, returned from Iraq in April. Now we have families in our community who've sacrificed. And we have some with, with more than one son or daughter serving. And I'd like to just spotlight a couple of our families. First, uh, the Richard and Diane Moon family. Are the Moons here tonight? You're back there. Sergeant First Class Keith Moon and Sergeant Nathan Moon both served in Afghanistan for a year during their deployment. Keith slept outside in the mountains for six months before receiving a tent to sleep under. Finally, a, a rough forward operating base was built, but still the soldiers were fired on every night during his deployment. <clears throat> Grateful parents told me that for him to make it home in one piece was nothing less than a miracle. I want to mention the Pam and Codran Hansen family. Out of five boys, four joined the Army, two graduated from West Point. These are members of our community. The third will be coming, or will be this spring, this coming spring. As a total, the three boys who are on active duty right now have served six deployments, four to Iraq, two to Afghanistan. Jason, the oldest son, was in the 130, uh, 73rd Airborne Br Brigade and landed in one of the first parachute assault attacks in Iraq in 2003 in that initial invasion. Sandu is currently serving as a tank commander in Iraq as part of Operation New Dawn. Dewey's wife, Tasha, sitting next to me this evening. Um, stand up, Tasha. Oh. <laughs> Yay! Uh, <laughs> Tasha is the daughter of Corey and Andrea Evans, uh, who live in Centerville. As you can see, she's due to have a child soon. <laughs> Dewey will miss the birth of their second son because he's serving our country. I asked Tasha just to share with me some of the challenges that are faced by someone who has a family member serving. She wrote this, so I want to read it. I hope I can do it. <clears throat> She says, Dewey will miss the birth of our second son this winter. I think the biggest worry amongst all the war, beyond the obvious safety worries, is that, is that for your family. You worry as a wife if your husband will change a lot while he's gone. You worry as a mom if you can keep a close relationship between your children and their father with him being so far away. The men worry about their family being provided for and all the stresses being burdened on one parent. The children probably just worry about how safe their daddy will be. Dewey's brother Jason left the same time as he did this year to Afghanistan. I think for Jason, his biggest fear right now is that his son won't think he's, a, he's the hero he thought he was before, but they'll, that he'll hate him for leaving home when he returns. For me and my, my other sister-in-law, Megan, it's that our sons won't even remember their dad. But I've got to say, that the bonds that hold your family together through these times really help you be forever strong. And Dewey's mom said it right when she said that you never second guess your sons or your husbands when they're going to do something honorable like serve their country. It has definitely taken on a new meaning for us in being in the military and the pride you feel as a wife or mother is just wonderful. Thank you, Tasha. We appreciate your sacrifice. We appreciate the sacrifice and service of all those who serve in the military. In the immortal words of Samuel F. Smith, the Baptist minister who wrote My Country, Tis of Thee, quote, from every mountainside let freedom ring. May God continue to bless our country, our state and community, and those who serve to protect our precious freedoms. Thank you.